Hi, my name is Brett Richardson. I have over 10 years experience in software development and today I'm going to be covering what a software development methodology is and then seven of the most popular software development methodologies today. If software already exists, then it's far easier to purchase it rather than paying for a development team to create it. Unwritten software can turn what appears to be a simple task into a black hole of time and despair for everybody involved. This means to reach a successful finished product, we need a reciprocal feedback cycle inside the team and then between the development team and the customer to know if the project is on track. By the word methodology, we simply mean a high level way of working that coordinates efforts for the project. We can't test or deliver software before any code is written and no code can be written without knowing what we are building. So we've got a sequence of actions that need to be performed. There are lots of different ways of structuring work as a team or as a solo developer. Here I'm going to cover seven different methodologies at a high level and then in subsequent videos cover each one in more detail. I've chosen these seven so that any other methodologies that you come across will simply be a variation of one of these seven. Before I cover the first one, I'm going to share with you a fundamental building block of all good business practices, and that is a basic feedback cycle. First, we plan a task, do something, and then review what we have done. All methodologies are simply a variation on this. Some of you might recognize this as a methodology called continuous development, or a simplified plan, do, check, adjust cycle. This is simply an overview video, and I'm not covering all software methodologies just the ones I think should be covered to give you a good understanding and working knowledge, and that can be applied today. Our first methodology is not working with one at all. I like to call this methodology ad hoc, or as one of my bosses used to say, just get it done now. This is an anti-methodology. It is sitting down and doing work without any formal structure, which I think is a totally fine and legitimate methodology for a small task uh, or project. Companies typically use this methodology when discovering an integration bug after upgrading a production system. It is the methodology of pure focus without any planning or organization, excellent for a single individual focused on a single task. The waterfall methodology is the traditional view on product development. You start, complete a series of tasks, and then after a predictable amount of time, the project is completed. This methodology is best represented by a Gantt chart where each block flows into the next. This is not a methodology we use in software development because it isn't flexible enough to handle the multitude of unknowns encountered during development or cater for all the project adjustments that are made during development. If you're working on a cookie cutter project that doesn't include any feedback or testing, then waterfall is fine, but this isn't software development. Software development is full of problems and project adjustments that need to be made to keep things going. But somehow when teams discuss ways of working, this methodology is accepted as a viable option. In my opinion, a lot of companies that believe they're using Waterfall are actually using our next methodology. The V model is a well-structured methodology with good formal lines of feedback. You start from the top left corner and follow the V shape down doing all of the planning steps. At the bottom you code and then you continue the model to the right and up, testing as you go. Each type of testing will now use the planning documentation to test against. If there's a problem discovered at any stage during the project or feedback is needed, then you reverse direction away from user acceptance testing and project completion. The W model is similar to the V model, but each step has the quality assurance team as part of the process, providing feedback, writing additional documentation, ready for the testing and validation stages. I'm not going to say that the W model is better than the V model because that depends on your project. I'm only going to cover two types of agile methodology. The first is Kanban, which is essentially a board where tickets move from a to-do column to a doing column and then eventually to a done column. What I've presented here is an overly simplified version of Kanban, but I will be going into a lot more detail in a future video in this series. Kanban is excellent for solo developers and large teams as it is effective at tracking work and allowing everyone to quickly see the current state of tasks and the overall project. Scrum is the second agile methodology I will cover. And this is a diagram that I created because I wasn't happy with any of the ones currently out there. 
With Scrum, a team is selected to be part of a Scrum. This might be the whole development team, just a few developers or one developer. Work for the team is selected from a backlog, placed into a sprint, which is a set amount of time that the team has to complete the work. This is typically one to four weeks. Each morning, the team holds a standing meeting where each team member will say what they did yesterday, what they're doing today, and if they are having any problems that is blocking their progress. At the end of the sprint, they will do a release and a group retrospective meeting on the sprint. Agile Scrum is currently the most popular of all software development methodologies, and I will go into why in another more in-depth video later in this series. This is another diagram that I created because I wasn't happy with any of the ones out there. Extreme development is a methodology where only the customer's current highest priority items chosen by the customer are worked on and releases are deployed to the customer weekly. When a customer requirement is implemented, only the most basic aspects of the requirement is implemented so that feedback can be given by the customer and the customer can receive something sooner. Before any coding is done, unit tests for the feature are created and coding is always done by a pair of developers working together. When they believe the work is complete, the code passes through the project's unit tests and then user acceptance tests are performed. Only then is it released. The idea of this way of working is that it is highly responsive to customer requirements. There is a set of values that users of extreme development should have like communication, good feedback, respect, etc but these aren't enforced by the methodology structure. I will go into these in more in depth in another specific video on extreme development later in this series. So which is the best methodology? That depends on the team and on the project. At the moment, Agile Scrum is the most popular, but that doesn't mean that it is the best for all projects. My advice to you is that you should pick one, try it for a set amount of time and then review it. That review should be finding ways of making the methodology produce better results for your project. Be leaner and more efficient. Do not add complexity without need. Often it is the customer or stakeholders requirements that chooses a methodology for us. And my final bit of advice is to never allow a methodology to drive you away from what is right. A methodology is there as a structure for work and cooperation, not to prop up your poor discipline or to blame for problems. That concludes my very brief overview of different software development methodologies. I'm currently producing the rest of this series covering each methodology in detail, uh, plus one very useful bonus one at the end. There'll be a direct link to those in the video description below or click the pop up in the top right corner. Uh, if you found this video useful, hit the like button and if you want to watch more content like this, uh, hit subscribe.